Hey, Katie girls, it's wait, it's not Sunday. It's Tuesday. Nope. It's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> August 24th, 2021. Welcome to Comes Out Loud Drag Race All Star Season 6, Episode Number 10. You're in the mood for a redemption, secret, lip sync, smackdown, or some bullshit? Um, sure. <laughs> Girl, your tepid response says it all. But for those of you that don't know who we are, my name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. <laughs> Get the tea kettle ready. That's oh, all I got to say. child. So uh, oh. if you are just tuning in now, hi, welcome to the show. Uh, it's episode 10. We're almost done with All-Star Season 6, but you're welcome to hear us gab on with our thoughts about what happened in this uh Game within a game that has finally been revealed. Mm -hmm. Took nine damn episodes to get through, but here we are. Uh, so we're going to jump right into our first section. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right, put the pedal to the metal. Overall thoughts on the Redemption Lip Sync Smackdown. Damn. I love how you say it so enthusiastically, <laughs> and I'm over here like. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to do better than Carson did as the Ooh. announcer. Girl, I'm sorry. I went off on his ass in the Telegram chat. I was not <laughs> thrilled. I was like. I'm sure I'm spelling his name wrong. I don't care right now. I'll get to it later. Um, so I just put down, I was right. Woo. Like. Oh, I was right. Like, I knew this was kind of what it was. I had a feeling this is exactly what it was going to be. Okay. There's going to be an elimination. Like, the queens would, you know, lip sync, and then it would kind of go up the way. I love how, um, I, I don't know who did it. Maybe it was Bussy, whoever it was. But kind of, like, compared to, like, the Mortal Kombat as you're kind of going up, the like, the, the old tower, if you remember that game. Um, wow. But, yeah. I was... Let me see. I was happy and that I was right and kind of like that this was what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Having said that, um, it was rather interesting how this all kind of went played out. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I'm feeling a certain kind of way uh, about some of the results. Um, and me and Jim actually, uh, I, I actually didn't watch this episode until Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, if, for those that don't know, and, um, I was out of town for, um, uh, a little world fair weekend shenanigans and, um, <laughs> four long days as the partner says, Aww. but, um, um, I had, I, I, I was a little busy, so I, Sunday, I had told myself I, I, I wasn't going to have any time during the event. Like, I knew I wasn't going to have any time. So Sunday was the day that the event was kind of done. Um, and I knew I had a few hours to kill before I was going to go to dinner with friends. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck it. Let me just watch what I can. And then maybe if once I get back, I'll watch some. Like, I would have watched more today if I had had an opportunity. But I didn't need to because I watched everything. Um, on Sunday okay. and the telegram chat as well as Gary <laughs> got some of my live you know honest reactions to things so, so <clears throat> yeah while you were t while you were not tweeting telegramming whatever yeah while you were messaging in the telegram chat Ed and I were having the post call discussion and I was dying because I was telling Ed what you were posting <laughs> and I was like, Woo child, I'm like, David is going on a journey and I can tell exactly where he is in the episode based on what he's saying. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, that was me. What about you? Well, my response is I asked the question, did we predict this? And I think we kind of did. I think between mm -hmm. you and I, over the episodes, we theorized what was going to happen. And because there was a game within a game, I was like, 
And I thought there had been a discussion that exactly the way it played out, not played out, but the way it was built was what happened. And that, yes, literally every single week, queens mm-hmm. were competing unbeknownst to the to the remaining cast. And honestly, I still got goosebumps about it. I love this idea, this concept. The sh- shitty mm-hmm. thing is now it's been done. So for the next All Stars, who knows what they'll do. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I would be okay if they did it again, but if they made it known. Like let's not it's not secret anymore. We can't play the, we can't use secret anymore. Mm. It is no longer a secret. It should be known from the get. Like Rue comes down the steps, all the queens are there. If you get eliminated, you may have a chance to get back if that's what they're going to do. Like don't play the secret bullshit. We already know it's going to happen. Unless well, you want to twist it up somehow. And I still think my last idea is valid. I discussed it with Ed, and he thought it was amazing. (laughs) So I'll get it out of the way now, because we're going to jump into what happened in the episode and then talk about the runways. Um, My last theory is still valid, I think, which is they should have done it in rounds of three. So Mm. they should have waited. Not they should have, but I think it would have been better if they had waited to the end of episode three and then took the queens eliminated in episodes one, two, three, and made them as a trio lip sync for their redemption. Mm-hmm. And then do it for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you would have still had three queens from each one from each round, and then make those three lip sync for redemption. So you still get one queen in the end, but you only end up with four lip syncs as opposed mm. to eight. So you cut it in half, but mm-hmm. it makes it that much more competitive because you know, yeah, it's not just yeah. you and some other bitch, it's you and the other bitch is the other mm-hmm. queens. So that was fair. They could so, do that. That would be a way to switch it up a little bit. World yeah. of Wonder, if for some reason you're spying and listening in, hi, and you're welcome to take that idea. I, I don't need compensation for it. It's okay. It's not that original, but you know. I mean, <laughs> but if you're going to compensate, <laughs> <laughs> CubsOutloud.com. PayPal comes out loud. Yeah, pay, Venmo, paypal.me slash comes out loud. Yeah, you could yeah. you could send us some coin, girl. Or yeah. you could just award two lifetime WoW Presents memberships, perhaps. Ooh. You know? Um, yeah. that would be fine. Mama wouldn't complain if you about that. I wouldn't complain about that, no. <laughs> I could I could I could well, um, I might have to stop I could stop paying for Paramount Plus. Oh, oh, don't. <laughs> All right. Well, I, before we talk about the, the runway looks, well, actually, let me ask you this. Would you rather talk about the runway looks first or the actual lip syncs themselves, like the, the rounds? Oh, gosh. I don't even know. I think I'd love to talk about um, the, yeah, let's talk about the lip syncs. Okay. That's fine. So <clears throat> the reason I ask is because I, I, <clears throat> I have many, many, many images um, <laughs> captured for this. So uh, let's talk about the, the lip syncs themselves. So RuPaul's Secret Redemption Lip Sync Smackdown Lollapalooza Extravaganza Eleganza. Eleganza. Like, yeah. Carson kept throwing shit in there like at, at, at certain points because I think he was getting tired and like, you know, trying to make Mm-hmm. It even more silly in a way than what it was. So, yeah. So it is definitively this, like, uh, revamped 80s glam gaming, like, kind yeah. of combat type uh, graphic situation, which I thought was really funny. So, oh, Miss Cressley. First of all, I hate your jacket. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to call it out because the more I kept seeing Carson, I was like, I, I don't understand what we're wearing or why we're wearing it like it doesn't make any sense to me it's like this isn't the races this is not the derby nobody's jockeys anyways yeah i i i would have it would have been great if he had been in something you know retro-y like uh like a like a even like a silver lapel like like pink some bullshit you know like something Stupid 80s looking, because that's kind of what they were going for, this 80s, 90s right. gamey graphic kind of go, which I thought was kind of cute. I will admit I did like that, the way that they, I don't, obviously they did that with their 
uh, they recorded those little images when with their um, entrance looks. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was kind of cute, cute that they used the like turn. Like it looks like I don't know if they were really turning. I'm assuming they were. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I was I, I, I like that they used that as sort of the um, intros for the queens. Yeah, it, it was quite apparent that on the first episode day, their entrance looks, they made them jump on a green screen lazy susan turntable and shot Mm -hmm. them 360 in hd which was awesome because i did appreciate the first like you know introduction and i was like oh check this action out although i will admit it does get a little boring when a queen keep you know advances or advances and advances and like they have nothing to work with but like the one Mm -hmm. (laughs) like kind of animation image of them i'm like oh okay like so yeah but, of course, obviously, they couldn't make them do, like, you know, seven different versions of the same thing, because that might yeah. have given away that something was up to the queen. But, mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, so Carson is our host, and it was mediocre, but that's okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. these queens, this was funny. They went on a journey, and I needed to talk <laughs> about this. So, Rasha and Ginger were like, WTF? Trinity looked like she smoked one and she is just totally zoned out and Mm -hmm. I'll come back to her. (laughs) And, uh, miss, uh, Kylie Sonique love is like, what, 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 what? Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was really kind of amusing to me. (laughs) Nice. She was like, are you effing kidding me? To which I'm like, come on, Ginger, you knew something was up. Like, you called it out. Like, everyone, like, paid attention in the very beginning of the season. And I believe Rue did tell them in front of their face because there was even a clip of Scarlet saying in front of the mirror. There's a game within the game. Right. What does that yeah. mean? You knew it. You knew, you knew, you knew something was ha- going to happen. Right. There was a game within a game. You just didn't know what the game within a game was. And since it's been like nine weeks, yeah, you know, and so, nothing has gone on. Something was going to be happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Raja, woo, girl. If there is someone who like it gives you a whole emotional like journey, she is the mm-hmm. one. She cracked my ass up throughout this whole thing because at first she was like oh no ma'am Mm-mm, not today not half of it and then she got into it and you know went along uh with things as well like i said miss trinity <laughs> child well i honestly think trinity like her, if you if you listen to her um commentary mm-hmm. um uh her whatever i'm like she was not having this at all yeah like period like she didn't give a fuck she was like nope i don't want any of them to come back we're already here i didn't get any time to celebrate my like victory and being in the top four which is fair um right yeah mm-hmm. so uh, it will come back to that because there's, there's another thing later on uh and then this one like if anybody was the fan within the game, it's 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 Kylie. She mm-hmm. was so excited to like watch the screen, see what's gonna happen. She was like, you know, avidly excited and entertained. So I was I was pleased that we got a whole variety of responses. Because if there had been four bitter bitches sitting there and just like, I would have been like, this is not good television. It's not very fun mm-hmm. <laughs> to watch. And I do believe in the course of watching everything, they got two drinks. Because mm. notably, the drinks got down, and then at a certain point, they had a lot more liquid. And I was like, good, mm. good, because they deserve it. Now, I don't know if the second round had alcohol in it. I think it should have. Um, but, you know, that's just my my take on things. So we get to smack, SmackDown round one. Serena Cha-Cha versus Jiggly Caliente. Mm-hmm. And they get to lip sync to Free Your Mind by In Vogue. Uh, girl, I'm just going to say it now before we get through all these rounds. I was mostly pleased with the songs. And 
excited. Like we didn't we didn't get some random kind of like B side, you know, crap or whatever. Like, I'm I'm honest. I'm honestly I'm happy that we did not get a single RuPaul song. Ooh, well put. Well put. Yeah. Just I'm just saying, like, ma'am, we we we've heard you enough. And we'll hear you, I'm sure, in the next, like, the final episode and something along the lines because you're going to get a song. We already know that. So let's not have you, like, kind of like the, like you said, the All-Stars 4, All-Stars 4, All-Stars 4, All-Stars, words. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. All-Stars 4, um, where they they did all RuPaul songs. Like, no, we don't, we ain't got time for that shit. Right. I want, I want good I want good music. Is what I'm saying, and I'm gonna sit there, girl. You just done said that. I said that with my whole mouth. <laughs> that you did. That you did. So this hey. particular lip sync has a couple good moments. Miss mm-hmm. Jiggly uh, puts herself into a, a splat. She put. She does a split on the floor, um, mm-hmm. and. Well, then there's this. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know what to call it. Someone referenced it on a podcast I listened to. What did they call this? They called this the lightning scissor or something. I never heard of this where she's like on Sarita's on it her back. Like and like trying to like <laughs> jiggle the, 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 the non-existent like thigh like flab there and ass because we know that's all padding. Right. Like it's kind of like um, um, Jasmine Masters. Um, oh, who does she look against? I forget what it was, but it was Jasmine Masters, and she's trying to do like it was Peter Butter, and they're trying to do the like shake the the thigh oh. the, the butt, and there's nothing moving because there ain't nothing there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, this was an interesting lip sync uh, for these two queens. Any thoughts that you had in particular about it? Like good, bad, and different. Uh, uh, I will say this. I think I think this one was was one of the better ones. Ooh, okay. Uh, uh, well, because they had an opportunity to, you know, like they look, they all, they both look mostly good. I'm, I never, I've never liked. I've honestly never. I'm not a fan of of uh, Serena's makeup in mm-hmm. this, and right. I don't like the hair. I think the hair is odd considering the outfit, and then, um. It just doesn't really work that well, and then her makeup just looks off. You mean her so, ponytails? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. They weren't really ponytails though. They're, they're because ponytails in the back. Pony ponytail is what Jiggly has. Yes, but Mama Ru on the recording, and I heard it every time I listened to it. Says to Serena, "All right, come on, ponytails," and I was like, and I, when I watched it, I was like, pigtails. Girl, you getting senile in your old age. They are pig tails, not pony mm-hmm. tails. Anyways. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I, mean, I thought it was an entertaining lip sync, you know. Um, I, I definitely think that, you know, Jiggly was trying to slaughter Serena. <laughs> um, she was like, uh-uh, not today, not on my watch. Like, mm Although I did think it was really, I loved the banter in the beginning. I loved how Raja was like, "Ooh, they talking shit!" Like, <laughs> yeah, that was that was very fun about the whole like beat down thing. Okay, so uh, lo and behold, Ms. Jiggly wins to slay another day. Mm-hmm. Smackdown number two. We end up with. Jiggly Caliente against Silky Nutmeg Ganache. And for this one, they are doing Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cindy Lauper. Mm-hmm. Girl, before they even begin, I was amused that Jiggly, like, was nearly going to piss herself because both of them are wearing animal prints. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> Jiggly's like, really? Two fat bitches wearing leopard print? Although, Silky... I'm sorry, had a good comeback and was like, well, you're done, been stretched. Like, <laughs> and I was like, dang. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah. Um, what did you think of, of this particular lip sync, Damon? Um, <laughs> it was interesting. I say I, I liked it. I did like it. I wish there had been more to um, One Queen's performance, mm -hmm. um, Silky's performance. But she got it with the with the with the um, props. Like, yes, I, I get what Jiggly was going for when, like, I'm singing in in with my into my my lollipop kind of thing. I get that. I totally get that. Right. But that didn't work. Well, I'm gonna say this: a bunch of queens underestimated what the SmackDown was gonna be like. Because I think a handful of queens showed up thinking, girl, I'm just going to show up in a well-painted face and some really good hair and an outfit, and I'm just going to, mm -hmm. you know, lip sync, um, and that's all fine and dandy. However, I think we all quickly learned, um, a couple of years ago, infamously, someone said, If I would have lip sync for my motherfucking life today, bitch, I was motherfucking ready! Okay, Queen. <laughs> and honestly, I think that was her mentality. She mm -hmm. has, uh, I, guess, I don't want to say defended, but has been very vocal on Twitter. Like, smacking down conspiracy theories and mm -hmm. shenanigans and bullshit. And she's like, nay, nay, nope, don't get it twisted. I had no extra budget. Production was not helping me. I had the same amount of time as any of these other queens. I just put all my creativity into it. And she even mm -hmm. said on the runway at one point, which we'll get to, um, I'm treating this as if it's the real deal. Why would I not? Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm. all right, girl. Okay. <laughs> I and you. in this one, I think I agree. I think Silky pulled it out. Um, yeah. Literally, literally pulled it out. Like, Girl, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the moment she pulled out the ice, I done fell out. I was like. She I, has ice cubes. Yes. <laughs> I was I was I was a little surprised. Actually more than surprised because when when she I think she pulled out the glass the glass first. A glass no a glass glass. Yeah, a, glass. A rocks glass first. Uh-huh. And then like this bottle of I'm assuming cranberry juice, like a, you know, because it looked kind of red. Um but it was something. It was a juice. Yeah, it was like an in a Gatorade bottle. Yeah, um, obviously they had torn off the label because you know. Or an energy what? drink bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the ice, and then the liquor, and then I was like, okay. And the crown the was her crown, by the way. Yes. She actually, uh, in an interview, revealed that she had brought the crown royal with her to the competition because she was expecting there to be a roast. And she was going to do the cocktail gag during the roast. Ah. So this was always a thing. Yes. But she put it. It in just happened. She put it here. Yes. That's fair. That's fair. That's fine. So. Now, I admit so this particular moment, I'm still a little mixed on the fact that she's flapping her hand to the <laughs> to the music while drinking. <laughs> I was like. Oh, bitch, you got cojones. Like, you really got some big balls to, like, drink and imitate lip syncing with your hand. Because <laughs> that's, that's really kind of a, of a joke okay. gag stunt. Oh. And I just was not expecting to see it on drugs. Mm -hmm. That Like, Fair. I've seen it in a bar. That's not yes. a big deal. Agreed. I have, so... I'll put it like this, and 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 we're gonna get to it, you know, a little bit more later. Like these are these are the stunts that like I would see a drag queen do in a performance. Mm -hmm. I'm mm, about main stage stuff, but we'll get we'll get to that. I okay. have I have some I have some thoughts. Okay. So yeah, uh, so we've got Jiggly <sighs> sucking out a lollipop, which is what she's known for. It's kind of one of her go-to like signature props mm -hmm. like literally jiggly normally has a, a lollipop with her and um and so yeah she's using it as a microphone but i'm sorry girl like it it doesn't really compare and that's the downside to that mm -hmm. 
So, um, <clears throat> unfortunately for Ms. Jiggly, uh, that happens to be the end of her journey in the Redemption mm-hmm. So we can move on to SmackDown number three. Silky Nutmeg Ganache against Yara Sophia. Now, I will say, before we get into this, I honestly was like, oh, okay, so we go switch it up again. Like, we get Jiggly for two episodes, we get Silky for two episodes, I expect Yara to win. So that being said, uh, the <laughs> song that they compete, that they lip sync to is Point of No Return by Expose. Hey, like... Again, like we are living in really good lyric land, like good songs. Mm-hmm. And uh, Silky comes out of this big old frock, which you're like, okay, we know there's a reveal coming. There's something. Yep. Um, in in this mm-hmm. case, girl. <laughs> Y'all, girl. I, 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 I. I. So. Yada mm. decides that she's going to use her leg as a guitar, as an air guitar prop, while she's on the floor, and she looks like she has got the biggest, like, itchy, you know, STD mm-hmm, situation mm-hmm. going on down there, and just scratching the uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, honey, I don't think you thought that through very well. <laughs> it did not work. Like I was, I thought it was cute at first, but then I was like, "Oh no, that does not look good." When you think about it too long, you're like, "Okay, like maybe you need to call the doctor. Maybe it's time to call the doctor because this is something else." Well, I will say this: for any potential uh, visitors, people who would like to have a little bit of intimate time with Gato Sophia, we know that she's flexible. So. Fair. You know? Mm hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> silky. <laughs> I was expecting more, but I will admit, again, she's got balls that she basically poured an entire 16 ounce bottle of water all over herself on the stage, like to mm-hmm. the back of the stage area. And I was like, well, you just kind of made that a, a, a slippery no go zone. In my opinion, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah, um, and and that was really kind of a, a you know a bit of a surprise to me that she decided to go that route, and you know then both of them end up doing the splits, uh, mm-hmm. and and there's there's a reason I I, I point this out because there's sort of a weird theme in a couple <laughs> of the lip syncs, like. The, I guess, the same track mind Mm -hmm. concept of of what the queens perform. So, uh, what did you think, Damon, real quick of the, (laughs) of this Uh, round? Again, this one was, this one was, um, surprisingly, it it caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I have, I've always expected more from Yara that we got, than we got this season. Like, I'll say that right now. Uh-huh. And this was sort of that, like, moment for me where I was like, like, you could have really done something totally off the wall. And we got, like, this little reveal to just show off your body. And then you just danced around. And that was all we got. And I feel like, and then you did the whole thing with your legs. And, the, and no, that just didn't work. Yeah. And then there's the water. Yeah. And, like, I, but again... <laughs> So, so far, and I mean, I mean it now, uh-huh. so far, I've seen why Silky has succeeded. Okay. Yeah. I, right. That's the thing. What it comes down to is how you perform in this one moment. Like, I mean, technically all the lip syncs are the mm-hmm. same in that, like, this three minutes or however long is, like, the most pressure filled moment of your career quote unquote at this moment mm-hmm. if you want to continue on and i think yet again just like in like outside of this yada presumed way too hard that she was just naturally going to keep sailing through mm-hmm. and i was like no girl no that's not going to sail you through because <laughs> you kind of keep 
misjudging like some things that you make decisions on and i'm just like girl i don't understand what's happening Mm -mm. so yes uh consequently miss silky wins yet again Mm -hmm. so we move on to smackdown number four this time it is silky nutmeg ganache versus scarlet envy Mm. And they get to perform the one and only song for the lonely by Cher. Sure. Now I will say this: Scarlet Envy really looked the part, so to speak. Correct. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about like their looks, but you know, she's got a bodysuit on. She's got thigh high boots, big hair, gloves. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah jewels all over the place i mean like she you know it's it, honey it's high heart drag like it's not a gown yeah. but it is it looks good it looks good on her it looks like it looks great i know we'll get to looks later yeah. but like yeah like go her yeah and silky you know has this flag routine deal that she does and come to find out you know from her information on twitter this is an umbrella with a spare piece of fabric and duct tape and glitter. This is not legitimately a flag. Mm-hmm. Like, she it's just something she made. Right. It's something that she made. It is not even like Latrice Royale color guard. Yeah. Full, yeah. Like, you know, flag deal. By the Correct. way, if you've Correct. ever seen the, the, the Latrice Royale do color guard as part of her performance, child, you have not lived yet. It is amazing to watch her do it. You should definitely see it. Mm-hmm. I've I've been blessed to see it in person when they did one of the Christmas Spectacular tours. It mm. was amazing. Yes. So, yeah. So Silky, uh, <laughs> again, I realize that some people are really kind of like divisive about this, but she has yet another prop. It's not necessarily a big prop, but it's effective. It helps, you know, with what she's attempting to do in terms of, you know, entertaining mm-hmm. and so this one was the one for me where it switched okay like i thought silky was done mm. like the prop thing was eh, it was eh. and then we had a pretty decent lip sync from scarlet my usual issue when I look back on it is that Scarlett is not the greatest dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was able to emote the song well. She knew the words. She knew what she was doing. Um, she looked great. Right. But I thought she had won it out. I honestly thought she did. Mm. I honestly thought Scarlett's performance was underwhelming. Mm. I was like. That's fair. Okay, girl, like you can only stand in about three spots on the stage for an entire song and get away with it. And this is not you make me feel like a natural woman. Like this is not one of those songs where you could just kind of right stay in yeah. place and do a lot of emoting. And I think that's where she really went wrong. And so, yeah, maybe she's not a dancer, but honey, she could have moved a little bit more. Shake your ass. Song for the Lonely Fair. is a gay anthem. Hello. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is disappointing, unfortunately. Fair. So the fact that Silky had a flag and did something different and moved around the stage and kind of not exactly twirled around her, I was like, mm-hmm. girl, like, <laughs> you're in trouble. Like, mm-hmm. And there was a part of me that's like, Silky's on a roll. And if you have that momentum and every three days you're given another chance to lip sync and you've got, you know, a day or two to put, you know, stuff together, you know, and relax and think ahead and be creative. It's totally possible. Yeah. That you could um, do better, so to speak. Mm. So uh, that brings us to SmackDown number five, because Miss Scarlet Envy does not survive, unfortunately. And this is the one that I think a lot of people were excited to see mm-hmm. because it is the Silky Nutmeg Ganache who's on a roll, win after win after win, against Akira C. Davenport. And I will admit, 
girl, when she walked out, I was like, "What? What is this? What? What? What is going Same. on?" Same. Same. I looked at this shit and I was like, what the fuck are you wearing? Did I even write that down? I feel like I did. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't write it down. Yep. 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 I didn't write. But I was very much like, what is this? Right. So you knew something was up because it all looked a little wonky. Like, like it's, and, and it's very obvious something's going to be revealed. Yes, you knew there was a reveal. You knew there were probably several reveals because there was the face mask thing and then the the costume. And then I realized it almost immediately. Normally, Mm -hmm. the eliminated queen is the first one that's on stage. The recently eliminated queen. And then they bring in the, um, the reigning champion, as it were. Right. And I saw this and I was like, Something's up. What's up? Because Silky came out first. Mm Mm-hmm. And we end up with this. Mm Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody there. There's a screen. Mm -hmm. It goes up. No one's there. RuPaul goes on to explain that Akiria decided to decline the offer to lip sync for uh, Redemption. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I remember distinctly watching the episode... And Akira was nonplussed when yeah. the video message came up. She was the queen out of all of them that was not excited by the idea or the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So when this got revealed, I will admit, I was gooped. Mm, that's fair. But I saw it coming. Like, yeah. Like, looking back, I was like, oh, she she ain't having this game within a game business. I called yeah. it episodes ago, and then sure as shit, nope, she didn't. She was like, nope. Jesus. See ya. Deuces. Like, I'm out. Like, and if I, how do I feel? Um, I feel like that's the thing to do. Like, everyone thinks like, oh, just, I'm, I'm ready to, like, I raced at the opportunity when I would do it anytime, bloody yada, yada, yada. I honestly think Akira had done, had enough with everything going on, like Akira, I think Bussy mentions this. I feel like Akira was overlooked so much this season. Mm. Um, she was turning it out on this runway and showed so much of her growth and to like fall into the bottom the number of times she did for, I, I, I don't quite, I don't even quite understand how, but um, she probably was like, "Fuck all y'all. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I don't need to be here. Uh, you obviously don't see what I've seen in myself, so I'm gonna peace out. Right. I don't need to. I don't need to get back into the game to show what I've done. So. Right, and I think. Uh, for lack of a better way to phrase it, because I have no other context, she pulled a Ben de la Creme. Mm-hmm, and was mm-hmm. like, I'm out. Like, nope, mm-hmm. I don't I don't need to do anything else. I'm good. I can go home. Um, which of course I'm sure through production a little bit. Um and uh, to my knowledge, there's nothing in the contract that obligates them to actually do something like this. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And technically, they get paid for every episode they're in. So guess who was in this episode? Silky. Even though she wasn't here for this lip sync, they still showed footage of her. So in my mind... You mean Akira? Or sorry, Akira, yes. So in theory, she still gets paid for the episode, even though she Mm -hmm. wasn't actually in it, technically. I mean, live or whatever you want to call it for the edit. So Yeah. Yeah. But... Silky goes on... And kind of surprises Rue and says, well, I'd still like to do the lip sync. And Rue has one of the funniest comebacks ever. And she's like, aren't you afraid that you'll lose? (laughs) And Silk is like, no. And this is when she gives the speech. I take this seriously. Even though I am not here in the main challenges, I still consider this part of like what it takes to prove that I deserve to be here. 
I have prepared mm. for this. I want to do this. And at that moment, I was like, oh, it is on like Donkey Kong. Like, Silky is out for blood. She's like, Mm-mm, no, 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 no. Like, I didn't do all this for nothing. So what queen <laughs> stands on the stage? And I love how Rue like had this like react like this she dropped the facade so to speak moment and she was like oh who am i kidding hit it like she was just like what the fuck is going on here like first of all akira doesn't want to perform and then second of all i've got a queen who is pretty much adamant that they are going to lip sync Mm -hmm. against themselves and we learn why (laughs) because she's performing barbie girl by aqua which is like a very popular dance song and this is part of the reason why she does this because she has crafted a split outfit between a male persona and a female Ooh. persona. <laughs> That's a lot of thigh. <laughs> Child, I howled with laughter i was nearly crying watching her perform this honestly stupid silly like number but Mm -hmm. i have to give silky props for like one of the most infamous lip syncs in the entire existence of drag race history because she did a callback to a previous challenge someone actually posted on twitter it was like Ginger Midge is having PTSD. <laughs> and they put a picture of Ginger Midge from the challenge where they had to do the half and half male female thing. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> so she does uh, kind of unintentionally an homage to that and then literally took a jumpsuit. She says it's her favorite jumpsuit ever and cut it in half and crafted like two pieces. So she literally like took an outfit. And another outfit, cut them in half, and then put them together in her room. God bless it. And yes, the mustache is a piece of the hair that she got eliminated in mm-hmm. in this season. Like, she did all this work <laughs> to present herself, to go from the mis- the mystery. Even the opening of the song, I was like, what is she up to? Because she's not even facing the judges. I'm like, something weird is going on here. Like, she's pantomiming, but she's strategically facing the back of the stage. And, 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 and. I didn't catch this. I had to have someone point it out on Twitter. Did you notice the lights in the back? Not at first, no. I completely missed it. Like, I'll be honest. I'm not really looking at the lights. Right, right, right. Like, I was looking at the queen and what was going on. But when they did that, I was like, oh. Oh, that's cute. I thought it was funny, and yes. I wonder if production, someone, someone gay, was like, oh, no, honey. Like, <laughs> we got to help this girl. <laughs> like, And they might not have known what's, what Silky was fully up to, but mm-hmm. the fact that she theoretically couldn't lose, I mean, I guess she could have. I mean, she could have done a super shitty job, and then Rue would have been like, that's embarrassing get out right get out but she did <laughs> um and you know honestly the judges were highly entertained and everyone has been talking about this is the number that silky will be remembered for and probably expected to perform like this mm-hmm. is part of her legacy is rolling around on the floor <laughs> i just it it oh, seemed no. like i was so i was I, I thought it was cute. I felt the execution was a little sloppy. Yes. But then again, she was doing this probably in her fucking like bed, you know, her room. She couldn't go into the other. And she couldn't go into the um, work room and sew shit together. Right. So she had to do what she had to do. Like I, I bet she's probably the whole out. She's probably wearing the full outfit that she has on for the girl side. I think she didn't cut that up. I don't think, but she didn't attach the the pants boys the pantsuit to it. Yeah, um, could be. Yeah, who knows? Although, is that a, yeah? That's a piece of the fabric of the other side that's kind of fallen off. 
But yeah, it was just <sighs> uh. girl. So um, obviously, sort of obviously, Silky wins. <laughs> wins. And then <laughs> Miss Trinity. I said I'd get back to her. Now here it looks like she's sleeping, but this is actually part of her attitude. Mm-hmm. And Raja calls her out on it. And even says a confessional about how, you know, Trinity's, you know, being sourpuss, pun intended. Um, Trinity said at the very, you know, beginning of the season, she's an emotional person. She's an emotional creature. And she has feelings. And she, you know, she's much more on the outside about them. She doesn't really, like, kind of keep them internal. Mm-hmm. So I was sort of not surprised that Trinity was basically like, what is with this buffoonery? Mm-hmm. And I think she like the longer this goes on round after round after round she realizes oh yes a a queen is coming back whether i like it or not like she might have known that at the beginning of this but now i think as each round keeps going and ginger and raja and kylie are entertained and really into it i think she's getting more and more irritated like and just you know Angry but sulking and pouty at the same time is kind of my feel on that. Mm-mm. So then we move on to SmackDown number six. And at this round, it is Silky versus Jan. Now, at this point in the competition, I imagine the remaining queens that are eliminated are going to be surprised to see Silky. Because... When Rue explains that they're going up against a previous queen who has redeemed themselves, they're most likely thinking they're going to see the last queen. Mm hmm. Or maybe the queen before that. Mm hmm. But that's not the case. So Jan and Silky get to perform Heartbreaker by Pat Benatar, which I enjoy this song. I was super excited to see that we had this song. And I honestly thought this is sort of Jan's to lose. So what did you Mm -hmm. think, David? I thought Jan won. Okay. Like point blank period. I thought Jan won. I thought she truly fully portrayed the song. And I mean, she had all this, all all of the fun with this, the reveal of the wig, which whatever, um, was okay. But like everything else I thought was there. I thought my eyes were on her most of the time. Mm. Um, so I agree with you. There's a, Ed and I talked about this because there's there's two distinct things I think that happened in this lip sync that resulted in the outcome. So first of all, Silky has like the apparently twelve hundred dollar ruffle coat. Um, is how much she referenced it being in a in an interview article that she did online. Um, and because she gets asked about something uh, else and how mm-hmm. how did that even occur, kind of thing. Now the reason that I wanted this image in here is because unfortunately for Jan. When she does the slide, she hits the light at the edge of the stage, specifically Mm -hmm. the cover. So I told Ed this. I said, now, I don't know if it's written. And according to (laughs) Rue, when it comes to drag race rules, of which there are many. (laughs) Because they're all in her head. They're all in her head and they're all in the producer's heads, apparently. Right. There's kind of, a, I think, an unwritten rule, bitch, that you don't break shit. And the moment you start breaking the set, they kind of get frowny about that. Now, the one thing I did say to Ed is because of Bussy Queen's reveal of the contract, what I don't think has happened yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it comes in a future contract, is that you have to pay for any damages. Mm. Because right now... It's not being billed to you or deducted from your earnings. So technically, production has to fix what you've done. 
Now, I don't think that this was highly egregious, but at the same time, once this number's over, production then has to look at it, assess it, fix it. It's a union environment, so an electrician's going to be involved. Like, there's a lot more, I think, than just a simple oops. So this is one of the two things I think that did not go in Jan's favor, unfortunately. I will also admit I clocked in the confessional to camera. I was like, bitch, why is your lace front not glued down? Oh, well, me know why. Right. Because she... she just threw her hair off and, you know, showed, showed up <laughs> her hair. Which I guess is fair because Roxy did the ultimate reveal of reveals when it comes to hair. And if you attempt to do it the same way, then you'll probably be clocked for, like, duplicating yeah. whatever she did. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you. Jan is, like, the epitome, in a way, of the song. Uh, Silky, you know, is doing her thing. Both of them <laughs> end up on the floor. I thought Rue was going to freak out because Silky went running across the stage to do this drop split on the floor. <laughs> and this is about the only moment you see of it um, where she's she's OK. Like she's upright and she didn't fall off the stage. She didn't knock anything over because <laughs> I think I think Ruth thought Silky was just going to keep going. Like like she was <laughs> like like bowling. She was just going to go right off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because Rue was like, oh, my God. Like, I was like, oh, girl. Like, she gets so easily excited about the queen stunts. Like, she's the most vocal of the bunch. Every time someone puts, she's like, ooh, ah, ooh. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. girl, calm, calm down. down. Calm down. <laughs> calm down, Beyonce. <laughs> and then there's this. So I, I, can't, I got this. Her. Well, I got this moment on purpose. <laughs> this is. Jan with an air guitar and this is Silky with a prop guitar. Now, my favorite thing is, oh, is it, was it uh, Ginger? Somebody said, where in the hell did she get a guitar? Mm-hmm. Well, she made it. Yeah. In the interview online, she said, it is made, what is it? It is made from a pizza box, I think part of a shoe box, and glitter and paint and I thought rubber bands, but I think it's actually some type of like a string or something or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. She literally crafted a guitar as a prop and hid it under the big coat on purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, I clocked it in the beginning of the same the, here. The number I saw it on the floor. So when same. everybody's like, where the hell did you get a guitar? I was like, bitch, she brought it. It was already on the floor. But according yeah. to the interview, Nobody knew that she had it with her, and she said she very carefully placed it so nobody would notice. And I'm like, well, I think production might have noticed. Like, like the crew might have been paying yeah. attention. Maybe the judges weren't looking. Because I'm like, bitch, even if you had it, like, cleft in your butt cheeks, and you somehow, like, dropped it on the floor <laughs> quietly and, like, slid it with your foot, I still don't know how people didn't see it or know that she had it. Fair. So... This is the second moment that I wanted to reference in this lip sync. I think this is where Jan lost it. Because this moment, no offense, I told Ed this. I was like, you kind of look foolish playing air guitar next to a queen who has a guitar. Like, mm -hmm. I'm Maybe. sorry. Like, like, they have the thing you're trying to imitate. Unfortunately, I know that's probably not a good reason, and he did, but I think that's like one of the key things. And at the very end, then Silky just smashes her prop guitar on the floor in true fashion because it's a rock and roll number. And I was like, and there we go. Because the last part of the lip sync is the last thing the judges will remember, or more specifically, Rue, because she's the ultimate decider in this case. Mm hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a feeling I just, you completely I, disagree. I, just, I disagree. Okay. I completely disagree. I get what you're saying, but I feel like Jan rocked it. And this was, like, this is, <sighs> we're now getting to the point where we're falling on props. It's not Silky winning, it's the props that are winning. 
Okay. Okay. I think I think it's a little harsh because Silky created all the props and had the creativity I, to come up with them. And, and she also had the time. And that's sort of a thing too. You got to realize, like Jan, since if if how they portrayed it is is true, then Jan goes off stage after losing. Mm-hmm. D drags, comes into the workroom, starts packing up her shit, and then is told, game within a game, lip sync. Mm-hmm. And then they have, she has to proceed to get ready for the lip sync and then go back on stage. She doesn't get time to make props. She doesn't get time to go find stuff to, to, to you know, do something about it. She doesn't get that opportunity. Right. Whereas Sophie gets that opportunity because one, she knows the song, and two, she has time. Yeah, yes, you could. Yes, she made it from stuff in her room that she got, like a piece of box or whatever. That's all well and good, but she gets the time to do that. Whereas Jan, Scarlet, the other ones that we'll see later, you know. Jiggly was really the only one that had an opportunity mm-hmm. to like make something or bring something to it, and she brought a fucking lollipop. Um, <laughs> whereas I feel like everyone else doesn't get that opportunity. Yeah. So, and I the over you know again I get like sometimes the overall thing for we've always talked about it we talk about it every especially every snatch game is make Rue laugh. Mm-hmm. Make Rue have fun with it. Um, that all that is usually true, but I often think that it's not always true with the lip syncs. Mm-hmm. And this was not this was a one of my reasons where I feel like Jan performed the fuck out of this song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jim said, "Oh yeah, like," and I think Silky relied on her props. You know the reveal of the big the the big ass coat that had nothing to do with the the the, the song. She had a wig reveal that kind of came off, mm-hmm. you know, clunky. Um, and then she's in this bodysuit that we see here, this blue and white, this blue and black, you know, sparkly jumpsuit. And then she pulls out, not pulls out, but grabs the guitar, and that's the kind of the thing, and that's the stick. Right, that's the stick. So, whereas I feel Jan, like, provided a good performance of the song. Right. So, So I will agree with you. Like, this is the moment when I was like, okay, because I was enjoying all of it, and I was living for all of it. So, there was a part of me that's like, okay, why was I not living for it when Shangela was doing it? Mm -hmm. Because Shangela was another queen who every time was, like, had some shtick or whatever. And what I realized is... Because actually, Shangela annoyed the piss out of me. Mm. Her narrative in that season was, I'm Daenerys, bitch. I'm the queen of dragons. I'm blah, 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 blah. This is my kingdom, and I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. Guess what, bitch? No, you didn't. (laughs) You were so confident, you irritated the rest of the the competition, and they were like, nope. Mm -hmm. You do not get to continue. And that was the end of that. And I was like... Well, I guess that just goes to show perhaps you should kind of keep your shit a little bottled up, honey, instead of like walking around thinking like you're it. Silky, on the other hand, to me, I was intrigued to see what she was bringing every single week because I wanted to see it as opposed to being annoyed Mm -hmm. for me. Um, That's fair. So I'm not saying that it's right that she won, but I had to really think about it. And when it went to her, I was like, okay. She really, like, fought to get it, and that's no disrespect, and it doesn't mean that Jan didn't, but in a way, it's unfair as a comparison for the two of them, because I agree with you, and that's why I had captured this one image. I was like, when both of you are doing the same move, literally side by side, and granted, Jan's leg is in the air and Silky's is not exactly in the air, um... (laughs) I'm like, girl, like, like this looks like nothing. And mm-hmm. and that's unfortunate. If Silky had not had the guitar prop, I 
think it would have been different. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Because, because then this moment at the very end couldn't have happened. Correct. I mean, you could you could have attempted to act like you're smashing a guitar, but no, it wouldn't have made any sense because you needed to physically see it. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look right. That looks like you're insane. Well, um, yeah, it looks like you're top like your tomahawk chopping with an axe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're, you know, just cutting somebody up or whatever. So yeah, there's that. So Silky ends up winning. Mm-hmm. She gets to continue on. So we move on to SmackDown number seven. Lo and behold, it's Silky Nut Meganaj versus Pandora Box. And as much as I was interested in Akira, now I am I am really interested to see how this is gonna go. And they end up lip syncing to focus by Ariana Grande. Um so yeah. How do I put this nicely? No, I don't need to put it nicely. It's you. Um, <laughs> Pandora ain't. Th- this was this was never going to be Pandora's to win. Right. From the song to the the j- from the song down, like it just wasn't going to work. Yeah. Like this is a modern song. This is a funny. This is a like performance dance song. Mm-hmm. More than a like kooky have fun comedy kind of song and while i understand that pandora has grown and she looked amazing Mm -hmm. jesus christ she looked amazing that was all we got like there was no way this was gonna be like yeah i mean you know silky tears off a skirt (laughs) has this hold on yes is that a tear no, that's her, that that's her support bra underneath the black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This 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 here is her uh, sports bra or whatever she was wearing. Got it. Underneath. And I'll, I'll come back to that later when we discuss the, the Got lips. Got it. Because there's something very weird that happened with this particular lip sync. Okay. Um, okay. I, you know, I agree. Pandora did the best that she could. <laughs> I mean, this mm-hmm. is not a flattering screenshot she looks like a sex doll but you know she she was <laughs> attempting to try to be funny with it my problem is is that she was actually trying to lip sync the male part mm. like, and while yes silky did it in barbie girl silky actually had like two two faces two roles that she was representing while yeah, she literally yeah. rolled on the ground to, to from male to female like mm-hmm. lyric portion. So I just never think it looks good when a queen is, you know, presenting, it, uh, you know, the the female so to speak and then they're singing the male part and I'm like oh. it always depends for me and I'm okay with it with in certain parts where like if it's like a quick like do 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 like kind of thing, I get it. But I just how do I make this nicely? No, I keep saying that. I shouldn't say that. I just think Pandora was trying to grasp at straws and trying to do something that just wasn't going to work at all. Right. Like nothing really worked here. Right. Like nothing at all. Right. Uh, So Silky ends up winning. And that brings us to the final SmackDown. It's the final SmackDown. That would have been funny if they had done that as a parody moment. (laughs) Or if Carson attempted to say that, but he didn't. Probably because his stuff was in post. Like, after it had all been filmed and everything, and he's just doing it in front of a green screen, which is why he did such a shitty job. Um, (laughs) I'm sorry. He was busy reading off of cards, and he kept looking at the cards. And I was like, honey, do do you not understand how this works? Look into the lens. Lock your eyes into the lens, give it a beat, and then look away. But he wasn't even waiting a full beat, and then he would just look look at the card. And I'm like, you're not giving them any time to edit your shit. Like, it was sloppy, in my opinion. So, Mm. that being said, we have Silky Nutmeg Ganache versus Eureka for... Ladies, this is your last chance to impress me and save yourself. 
From elimination! The time has come for you to lip sync for your Root Dem Show! So, it is the showdown of all showdowns. The most recent Eliminated Queen versus Silky. Mm-hmm. And again, I was like, ooh, I am really interested to see how this goes. Mm-hmm. And interestingly, they get Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. Which honestly okay. is like a, kind of an, an all-time hit. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it was a big hit for Kelly. And mm -hmm. people still love it to this day. The gays love to sing along with it. Mm -hmm. It's one of those heartbreak songs, you know. It's a, basically a big middle finger <laughs> kind of anthem number. Uh, so what did you think, uh, David? Because I, I have a feeling there's a, um, there's a certain expectation about this one. Um, um, I was expecting a whole lot more than what I got here. This was honestly garbage. Oh, oh. Mama, this is garbage. And yes. I don't think you're referencing what looks like black trash bags on, this, on the stage. Correct. No, no, the whole thing. <laughs> whole fucking thing. Like, okay, so. Okay, bet. Okay, so. What is with this outfit? <laughs> like, one, I feel like we've seen it before. We did. That's okay. The wig looks like crap. I know you, like, raced to get on stage. Um, unlike everyone else, and this is the other thing I don't understand, and I'm getting a little miffed and mad about it as I'm sitting here talking about it. It looks like to everyone else, for as far as I can tell, the queens had maybe a little bit of time. Like, they had the opportunity to, like, take off their makeup and then maybe put new makeup on. I don't know how long they had, maybe an hour. This is clearly the makeup that she was wearing as her um, evil queen character from the Drag Tots episode. Correct. She did not have, I mean, I thought she had time. Now, they tell us that she got, it was like 10 minutes later or whatever after she got eliminated that she came back. I doubt that. I highly doubt that. But again, like, we see her running around. She takes off the outfit. She throws on a, well, she had taken off the crown and then threw out her wig real quick to, like, talk to Rue, even though we know it's a recording that is probably being repeated over and over and over again. Um, and then she's like, oh, shit, I gotta do this. So she, you see her get into this, struggle into this outfit, and then she's looking for a wig, and she had one on, like a blonde one first, and then she grabs this one. Didn't have time, apparently, to glue it down. And um, then she goes up on stage. Whereas Silky has had time. And mm -hmm. we get this, this, um, sumo wrestler, like, fake sumo wrestler looking, like, trash bag, whatever. That's where my little gif came in, because that's the first thing I thought of when I saw this thing. The sumo wrestler are the big, like, if you've seen the vine of the guys in the big, like, like blown up suits and they're kind of dancing around with their feet, like, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, that was me. That was it. That's what I got the first time I saw this. And it doesn't make sense. So none of these lip syncs make sense. First of all, none of the performances make sense. They're apparently each individually making tributes to their mom for one reason or another mm -hmm. that don't make any kind of sense. The song is called Since You Be Gone. It is very clear about what it is. It is not a it is a breakup song. It is I am fucking fabulous without your ass. That is what this song is about. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with your mother. And I can stretch and get what Silky was going for. With the whole, my mom lost a whole bunch of weight. So since you've been gone, the weight is gone. I can breathe for the first time, yada, yada, yada. Maybe. But your execution sucked. Your execution was shit. Yeah. 
and, and yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, and, and and as I said to Ed, you and I have said this many times before, Damon. If you have to explain it, Mama, mm-hmm. it's not working. No. So I didn't understand what she was doing until I hear the voiceover, and then Silky explains that it's a story about her mother and how her mother lost 80 pounds and that's why she's eating potato chips which i told ed i was so irritated with her i was like you pompous bitch you are Uh standing on the main stage just chomping away eating potato chips yes in front of the judges i was like what is going on here and then when i hear the voiceover i'm like okay this is part of your character and hence you put them on the floor and you stomp on them and then you take the the big suit off you're taking this like you're exercising, yada yada yada. Right. But yeah. No. No. And then we end the song with this business. I can't. Like Honestly, I thought this was sad. Really? I thought yeah, Why? I thought it was sad. I thought it was sad that Eureka is like praying to her mother at the end of the lip sync. And it's not Madonna's like a prayer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it's not a song that like evokes praying. So this, this came across to me that Eureka was honestly asking for like intervention or guidance or help or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that girl, that's sad. Like, like, First of all, you mean sad as empathetic? I don't know if I want to say pathetic. I'm just like, like it depressed me. I was like, oh, honey, why do you think you need to do this? Like, what? Like, I, she, I very much feel was in her, her, in her emotions and her feelings in this moment. But I was like, I don't understand what's happening. Like, maybe you're overwhelmed. And yes, you grabbed the life alert, which made no, no sense to no. anybody except you, but because you wanted to have a piece of her with you so to speak. Um, I didn't know it was a life alert. When I first clocked it, I was like, is that her mother's ashes? Because they make pendants. You can put remains in them. So I was like, mm-hmm. maybe that's what she did. But then when she said it was the life alert, I was like, okay, that, okay. And I'm not trying to be mm-hmm. little Eureka as someone who is, like, I've lost my own mother. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just, it, I would have not done what she did. Yeah, so I just, it just it, for me it's difficult to comprehend. It changed the whole performance for me. Yeah, honestly, because now like you're instead of like this whole like which the song is about, you're now like it's that whole like I've lost my you know family member since you've been gone kind of thing, right. and since you've been gone, if it were just that part, like just that those words. This makes sense. But the fact that it's a breakup song and literally the next thing is I can breathe for the first time. I don't know. Right. Kind of sounds like you were repressed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway. That was that was all of the challenges at the end of this. We do not know who won. So there's a couple of possibilities is what's going to happen in episode 11 talk a little bit more about mm-hmm. that in a moment you ready to yes, discuss let's do it. looks yes all right honey it's time to cruise the runway category is lip sync for your redemption <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Um, so before we uh, serve, swerve, and nerve uh, these, David, what were your overall thoughts? Uh, so I will I will say that it got better over time. Okay. Like, again, looking at some of the ones in the beginning and then moving forward onward, I was very much like, no, these, this is no, no. What are you wearing? Why are you wearing that? What is going on here? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then it got better as things went on. And then it didn't. And then it didn't. <laughs> and then we got to the last one. And, and I just. 
Yeah. Oh, there's so much there. Anyway, continue. Um, I simply said stunts, gags, and goops. Like this runway had everything like thrown at it in some fashion by all of these queens. So first up, Miss Sarita Cha Cha. Um, I give this a swerve. Okay. I did not like this coat. I thought it was too too big on her. Okay. I didn't like the outfit underneath it. I don't think it like while it was cute, it was just eh. I hate the hair. Hate the hair. And as someone who is supposedly known for doing good hair, like this does not work for this outfit. It does not work for this look. I don't know what you're trying to go for. It doesn't work. Like this is a like a little girl, like girly girl kind of looking hair. And that doesn't work for what one, what you're wearing underneath this outfit, Mm -hmm. and two, what you put on over it. So I thought it was a soft serve, but that's only because I didn't think it was a disaster. Mm. Like I couldn't swerve it, but I concur with you. Like the hair doesn't make sense with the outfit, like the coat. The only thing I could think is were you attempting to like imitate like little girl beauty pageants do you know what i mean like is that what this aesthetic was because that's about the only cohesiveness i could get out of it and then what does that have to do with free your mind nothing (laughs) (laughs) uh next up jiggly caliente this is the first time jiggly's uh yes lip syncing for redemption so this is, I will give this a soft serve. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like this is a, this is going to be a familiar outfit that we've seen because we'll see it later on Pandora. But this whole like bustier, panty, high boot with this like kimono robe kind of thing going on. Mm-hmm. It's cute. I love the hair. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm never a fan of the, if you're going to do like, a pink in your outfit, you need to do a pink lip or something along those lines or a nude lip. And the fact that her lip looks red here. Mm-mm. But other than that, like it works. Um, it works. I thought it was a serve. Like I, I didn't hate it. I appreciated the fact that she showed off her legs a little bit. Like mm-hmm. I thought this outfit was very, um, I just thought it was really good for her. The only time I thought it wasn't a good outfit was in profile because yeah. both her and Ginger are very round in the middle. And mm-hmm. so from front on the corset looks really good. But then when you turn sideways <laughs> to the profile, you, <laughs> you look like a pregnant girl. Um, so, and don't I know that feeling <laughs> <laughs> and the hair, while I liked this style of hair, Jiggly, honey, I need you to wash your wig and I need you to use some conditioner because then you won't have all these fucking flyaways and shit (laughs) because it was bugging the hell out of me that you decided to do hairography and then your hair's just like sticking everywhere. I was like, "Mm, mm, 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 no, ma'am. I would appreciate your hair just being a little nicer. That's all. Mm-hmm. But uh, but aesthetically, I thought it was actually yeah. I really was pleased with the look and the fact that she was a warrior pose with the screen came up. I was like, oh, I was like, OK. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I thought it was a serve. Next up. Uh, Miss Silky. <laughs> swerve. Absolute swerve. So. <laughs> oh, honey, just- honey. She does look like she ate a sofa. I don't understand yes. what happened here. <laughs> I was like, the face looks good. The hair's decent. I don't know how I feel about the big chunky necklace. The gloves matching the outfit is fine. She got a little heel on. I don't dislike the style of dress, but she... <sighs> it makes her... Okay. She looks so bad. Big. Big in the middle. In the middle. Right, right. Yes. And the worst part is the way this dress is cut, it looks like it's got little bit of feet just like sticking out of the back. <laughs> There's no shape to the leg yeah, at yeah, all yeah. here. And it just, it looks, it, mm, it looks like a kid's drawing. 
And I just, I, I, I just, I, yeah, this is, it's, it's, it's a, it's a swerve. Like, oh, it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. I don't, I don't see this as drag. Because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I could find a woman that would wear this just naturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's a swerve. But, but funny, like just, just kind of silly funny, and the fact that she had titties and then didn't have titties because she pulled everything out of them i was like Mm -hmm. what the hell girl fair 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 (laughs) i kind of wonder if she borrowed this outfit and that's why it just doesn't seem to work i don't know that like if it was built for another body and she just luckily fit it maybe maybe who knows uh jiggly's back again in this bodysuit with extra attached like sparkly fringy thing springy thing so this one i would give it as a start i love this hair on her Mm -hmm. i love this color of hair on her Mm -hmm. um i was worried about this not fringy but this sparkly whatever fabric that's against the cheetah print or leopard print whatever print it is animal print well we'll leave it like that (laughs) excuse me but really because on the hips it unfortunately widens. widens her more. I agree. And that's where I was having the problem with it. If it had been just like, I would have been fine with this if it had been, instead of these like, like, like bulk, like pads on the sides with the sparkly, if it had just been like a, a line, like a, like an accent um, of this sparkly thing to kind of go with the gloves and the, um, shoulder things yeah yeah it was i i didn't know what to think of it i'm gonna call it a swerve i'm just Mm. while the hair is nice i just can't with the outfit i was like why are we wearing pads on the outside why Mm. why are they covered in glitter like i was so confused (laughs) that's fair i was like no girl it doesn't need to edit it needed an edit yeah like i'm wondering if she borrowed this from someone again it's like this doesn't seem like your thing. So, like, it seems like a dance outfit, but at the same yeah. time, I'm like, I don't think this is meant to be yours or something. I think if it had, if you had gone with the black or dark brown, whatever that is, like, if you look at the side of her, the boob there, there's like this panel mm-hmm. that looks like it's either black or brown. Mm-hmm. And if that had been here on the hip, it probably would have narrow the waist a little bit more and that would have helped but anyway yeah silky's back again big blue hair big old dress coat like covering up i apologize i don't have the uh the reveal the car look. wash pants uh-huh <laughs> that was so, funny when ginger said that i'm sorry it made me it made me laugh so much so i will give this look a soft serve okay um not so much because of this but because of the reveal i think the outfit that she revealed to was kind of fun with the like like you said car wash pants and what have you Mm because i thought that was cute and everything kind of matched with the blues and stuff i will say i do think this is a serve and what i love about this because i don't think i've harped on it a whole lot but it is one of my pet peeves i wasn't able to clock easily that there was something going on correct you knew there was a reveal, like the outfit was going to change. I had no idea that there was all this fringed, glittery, like, you know, mm-hmm. pant stuff underneath. Agreed. So, yeah. Uh, Yada. So, I'm going to give this a serve as well. Okay. I did like this outfit and I like the reveal that it kind of tore away into like a little, you know, penny thing. Um, I like, it looks, I don't want to call this like a business suit, but that's kind of what I get like that, like, um, power suit kind of moment there. Um, the hair is nice. Um, I tend to worry again, I need Yada to like, stop putting stuff on her neck, like any jewelry, anything like whatever. Cause these big bulky fucking things on your neck, it makes it separates it separates your head from your body and it makes you look like a muppet yeah 
Um, it's a soft serve for me. I'm not thrilled with this outfit. I mm-hmm. didn't care for the fact that there were two tearaway pieces, and all it is is like it's like taking off the skin off of a of a the outer layers of an orange and i'm like okay so now i get to see your body but i was already seeing your body like it just it wasn't that big of a deal to me to to reveal to yes she's got too much shit on and girl your face is far too harsh like Mm. this mug it is beat but it does not go with the outfit it does not go with the I, i was so confused i was like what 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 are we what are we doing so yeah i mean it's that's a very mm-hmm. soft serve. I'm not thrilled with it. That's fair. Next up again, Miss Silky. And I don't know what to call this as an outfit. I mean, to me, it's very much a dancing. Yeah, this number. is a dance outfit. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I love her legs in this outfit. This is one of the few times where I was like, oh, okay, work. I like the color. Mm-hmm. So this is a serve for me. Okay. I love the color. I love the look. I love the cut. Um, the big bell, like not bell sleeves, but like poofy, like sleeves with some, I'm assuming it's like a, not a fringy, but like a furry ish kind of moment to them. Mm-hmm. Works really well. The hair is a little, uh, for me. Um, but other than that, I, I enjoyed this outfit. Um, even the little kitten heel, like, this was the but, episode I think when Raja was like, "Oh look, she shopped. She she what is it? She bought the ginger minge line." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man." Um, I honestly I think this is a really strong serve. Uh, I like the colors. I like the aesthetics. I like everything that you said. I, yeah, the hair could be a little bit better. I really loved the butterfly effect. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the appliques on the face into the hair. I thought that was a really yeah. good touch. Um, I just. I really, really, really liked this. I would, I was like, okay, now if I went and saw Silky and she was wearing this outfit, I, I, I would presume it's better in person than it than it is on camera. I was Correct. very happy with Probably. it. Probably, yeah. And she was up against Scarlet, as we discussed earlier. Yeah. Painted for the gods in this amazing yeah. number. Yeah, this is definitely a serve. Mm-hmm. Um, although I will give, I will, I'm taking a little bit off because I think the hair should have been red. Instead of brown, just that's just my that's just my opinion. But um, either a red or a black um, mm. would have worked with this. Um, the issue with the black hair would have been it just it's all monotone or monochrome. Um, but other than that, I love this look. I love the boots. I love the gloves. I love the sparkly like spandexy um, bodysuit. Yes. I definitely think this is a big old serve. If anything was to change, I guess it would have to be the hair. And there's a part of me that's like, you know what I would have loved that would have probably shocked the shit out of me is like a short white spiked, like, mm. like something so stark and abstract, like kind of mm-hmm. out there. Because I wonder, Damon, if this is her drag tots villain type look. Because mm. it's so well done and it's so superhero to me. Like it's 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 giving me the aesthetic of something. Maybe it's mm. Catwoman, maybe it's something else, but it's just it's a really, really good look. It's a really good outfit. Agreed. So uh <laughs> child <laughs> So here's what you didn't see earlier when we were discussing this. So this is the male half of the the Barbie outfit number for Silky. She took one of her T-shirts and done cut it in half and notably decided to use the half that on the bottom says Big Silk. So she used her own merch for this outfit. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Barbie half. Which is the very dancy, shiny, sparkly uh, deal. I'm giving this nerve. Okay. Um, and it's kind of nerve in both ways, like bad and good. Like, I don't quite know, like, how 
dare you wear this on the runway? But like, how dare you wear this on the runway? Like, it just, <laughs> it feels that way. Like, so much. Like, I love it and I hate it. And that's why it's getting this nerve. Like, because it feels like, again, it feels so, like, shoddily put together. But at the same time, though, like, there's a reason that it works so well because you've got both sides of the, the, the you know, the song. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of like, and, and again, you roll the fuck around on the floor all over this fucking stage with this shit on. And I just was like, okay, I get it. I, I, okay. Like, I'm assuming that your hair, with the exception of like the sideburn, that's your hair, Silky. Um, maybe, you know, Probably. maybe. Like, I feel like it is. Um. And and then just like, yeah, it just all kind of it it worked for some weird way, reason. Oh man. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think you, you put it perfectly. It is nerve on both ends. Mm-hmm. It is nerve, like, oh my god, I cannot believe you did this. And oh my god, I can't believe you did that. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, next up, Silky yet again. Mm-hmm. And see, like, this is what I was getting at. Like, how did we not see this fucking um, guitar? Like, how did no one see this guitar? It's I right agree. fucking there. I know. That's why I, I picked this specific shot, because she's given us this, like, Diana Ross moment or whatever everyone keeps mm-hmm. talking about. This big, beautiful hair. This, you know, peach you know, apricot, amazing, big old jacket. And the first thing I noticed when I watched it, I was like, eh, there's a prop. Look like it's right there. Mm-hmm. Right there. Mm-hmm. Right next to all the right floor. There. Can't yep. miss it. Can't miss it. Right so, yeah. fucking there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. And then after this, I don't have the, the shot. It's in the other series of photos. But anyway, she had the, the black and blue swirly, like, uh, pantsuit underneath. So I give this a serve. I mean, this look on its own is a serve. This would be almost pageant looking. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I like it. I, I agree. I, I think this is a serve, and I actually like this better than the result. I mean, true. The reveal? Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Because the reveal hair is not that good. No. And the pantsuit is a pantsuit. It's cute, but it's not. It's a, it's a bodysuit. Yeah. It's a spandex bodysuit. It's not as exciting. No. Um, Miss Jan giving us Sir. goth vampire. Yes. <laughs> Elvira something. Um, I, I I'm giving this a serve, and the main reason is she served the fuck out of it when she came out on the runway. She was stone faced, <laughs> like, like. I'm going to get this shit like my favorite part is I think Raja's like, "Ooh, is she mad?" Like mm-hmm. like they caught like the queens caught it, they commented they were like, "Ooh, girl, like Jan is not playing. Like she is in the game." Mhm. Yeah. Um I will admit I would have liked more in this cape. And um that's really it, but I I knew we knew the wig was a reveal. And that's kind of sad because I'll be, I agree with you. This look is a serve, what we're seeing on camera. Mm -hmm. After the cape and the wigger off, it's not as exciting. Yeah. And I'm like, that's disappointing because that's Mm -hmm. not the point. Like the the whole point is like to not only be surprised, but then to enjoy what comes after. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I just would have liked, I would have liked a little more, but it's a serve. Uh, So... Silky comes out uh, and surprises me for this one uh, where she goes up against Pandora. Honestly, I thought this was a serve. I really Agreed. liked the fun. Um, it's not whimsical, but it's very youthful. So it's like, you know, mm-hmm. skirt, uh, calf high boots, the the top, 
the I don't know what you call that, like the sleeves that don't quite make it. Kind of like a bolero looking thing, but it's not quite a it's not a bolero, but it's something along those lines. But I like it. I like this. I really do. Um, I think this was definitely a serve for me too. Um, it embodied the song a lot because that I could see um, Ariana Grande wearing something like this. something like this. Yeah. Now I will say this. I'm still greatly confused. This is the one thing I wanted to bring up when I mentioned about like there was some some oddness or weirdness going on with the camera stuff. Mm-hmm. The entire lip sync, she is wearing this outfit in confessional where she talks to the camera about performing this number. She is not wearing this nude illusion thing on the top. Mm. If you go back and watch, it is all her skin. It is all her skin, her skin tone and her stretch marks. And none of this on the top is hiding the real deal. Mm -hmm. So I'm really confused as to when they filmed what portions and Mm. what happened because Silky like is having problems in this outfit. It's the only thing that bothered me about the performance is that her right cup on the top was slipping and falling, but because she had the nude illusion thing underneath of it, like there was nothing being revealed. Mm-hmm. And I guess if she had just worn it with her real skin, like her titty would have flung out. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> like it's the, uh, so remember earlier when you were talking, you were like, is that a tear? Like what is, what is that deal? Yeah. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. was like, that's like the black sports bra she's wearing underneath the nude illusion. And I'm not really sure why. Like, the whole thing just drew a big old question mark for me. I didn't understand what was happening with this. Mm. Because to look at it in this picture, everything looks fine. But later, as she's performing, like, you can see the undergarment. Like, I mean, and then this thing starts to droop and fall. Like, and I was just like, what? Mm -hmm. What's going on here? So, yeah. Uh, She was up against Miss Pandora. So, as you referenced before, uh, the kimono with the... Uh, corset, bustier, and corset, yeah. and and yeah, boots. Yeah, again, I will give. I love. I give this another serve. I think Pandora looks amazing in this. I love the hair. I love the outfit. Um, it is a very similar sort of look, and I'm curious. Again, like you you mentioned something about like was this something they had brought? I'm wondering if this was something that she brought, because it's so similar to something that Jiggly brought. So I'm wondering if maybe this was something that they were supposed to wear. Maybe there was a, maybe there was a, um, um, runway category or a something kind of like this, like maybe Lady Marmalade. I don't know. I can't figure it out, but yeah. Well, as we know, they normally tell them to bring more outfits than they actually use. True. So this this may very well have been a theme that just never got used. But no, I agree. It's a serve. I think Pandora looked beautiful. She looked really, mm-hmm. really good. And we get to the last lip sync round. And then we have Silky in this big old suit. Now, Damon, I need, I need some help from you on this because everyone keeps saying the same reference. Mm-hmm. And I don't know the reference. Mm-hmm. And the reference is Mary J. Blige. Um, I don't know if it's Mary J. Blige or if it's Missy Elliott. Okay. Maybe I got it it's wrong. Probably Missy, it's probably Missy Elliott. Because there's a, she did a, um, oh God, I have to remember what the song, oh gosh, hold on. I know, now we're both jumping on the internet to look. Because I'm like, it, it's probably Missy Elliott and I, I got the reference wrong, but everyone kept giving this name and I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. Yes, it is. It is Missy Elliott. Um, I would share my screen, but it'll go away. I'll have to share. I'll show you afterwards. Okay. But uh, there's a, there's, there's a song she does in like this big, like black vinyl um, um, suit. That is very reminiscent of this. Um, so yeah, I'll have to I'll have to show it when we're maybe in post maybe when we're you know post show. Okay. I but right but I don't know that outfit so I don't get the reference if that's what people mm-hmm. think she was going for. Now what she explained to us 
is that this was meant, as we talked earlier, to be representative of her mother and how she went on a weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. Yada, yada. So. Um, right. <laughs> so I think it's a swerve. Like, uh, I, we had this big old discussion when Shangela wore the fat suit thing. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't happy about that. I'm still yeah. not really pleased about this, even though there's a story and there's a journey and a back thing. Like, yeah, I just I don't think it's a good look. I don't think it makes sense. The fact that there's mm-hmm. black duct tape to, to seal a part of it that apparently ripped, like right on the very front. Yeah, does not look. Good. I I also give this a swerve. Um, it just it's a, it's an execution issue, and even the things he wore underneath it was not the greatest it was a little jumpsuit black and like silver tone jumpsuit kind of thing going on yeah it was just a dance outfit uh, of some kind yeah and i just and again like the other issue was like we get to this number and she does the tear away the re- reveal and it she's flounders in it because it doesn't work um and i don't know why well i guess i probably know why it probably just wasn't as well done um so Silky said in an interview, actually, that there's a reason that it wasn't fully off and that she'll reveal and talk about that later. Sorry, okay. girl, that sounds like spin to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why you just can't admit that it fucked up and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll see. I done fucked up. I fucked up. I done fucked up. And it fucked up. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and then last but not least, Miss Eureka in the outfit that we'd already seen before. Yeah. Um, I don't like this jumpsuit. Yeah. We've seen Eureka in some fun suits, jumpsuits before. This one, the the color and the paneling just doesn't work well for me. I hate this little heel that she's got on um, that doesn't match anything that she's wearing. I don't like this suddenly green hair that doesn't make sense considering all the thin colors that she has on. If she had gone with like a pink hair or a blue hair or a blonde hair, um, it might have been okay. I don't understand why you're wearing the sunglasses. Again, they don't make sense. And I don't understand why you're wearing your, life, your mother's life alert bracelet because again, or necklace, because again, it doesn't make sense. Um, this is a, this is a, dance you know costume this is a a leot a, a leotard or whatever that you would wear i feel like you brought this to wear for a lip sync for your legacy that you never got to do yeah like i'm not sure where it comes from like mm-hmm. that's the that's the weird thing so and i can't find it I, we saw this earlier this season, and I just don't know when it was. Like, I don't know what happened. I lost the image anyways. Mm. She, she wore it at one point previously before for something. I don't remember what, but I was just like, oh, okay. So, mm. and to be fair, we're reaching the end of the season. So, this is the part where the queens start running out of shit to wear. True. So, there's that. So, that is all of the outfits for this particular week. You ready to get into our last segment? Yes. Okay. So... Okay, so it is time for Snaps and Eye Rolls, a.k.a. the Hits and Misses. So we talk about the highs and the lows of the episode. Mr. Damon, who you giving snaps to? Um, changing things up, okay, is what I put down. And essentially, um, I'm really happy that they went this route with the lip sync for your redemption kind of thing. Okay, and that's what I mean by changing things up. It wasn't the traditional like everyone comes back. And we get to see the queens like try to do something to get back into the competition. It wasn't like season four where it was a returning queen and a um, current reigning current queen kind of battling it out. 
this was very much the queens that had been eliminated battling for themselves for a right to get into the competition. Right. And I think that's a very nice way to have done this. Now, unfortunately, as we've mentioned earlier, they're not going to be able to do it again. They're going to they're going to have to do something else with it. So, right. I think they're going to have to change it up somehow. Yeah. Good. So yeah, that's it. You. Um, I'm giving snaps to what I called commitment to the game. Like, legitimately, there was a game within a game, and it was mm-hmm. ongoing the entire season. We just weren't seeing it until now. Now, on this one podcast I listened to, one person had theorized that they thought it would have been interesting if we had seen all this in Untucked. Like, each week, we got to see the lip sync redemption thing, so we knew the whole time what was going on, but that mm. none, none of the other queens knew. And then as the co-host of the podcast said, yeah, but nobody watches Untucked. (laughs) And I was like, damn. So maybe that's why they didn't put it in Untucked. But no, I think the commitment to the game, I I appreciated that most of the queens were willing to participate, that they actually attempted to, you know, do the best that they could. Um, And, you know, we, we ended up with the way things that went. Uh, so I rolls, <laughs> David. Oh, um, okay. So I'm gonna call it like it is. Um, did she really do that well? And mm-hmm. I'm talking about Silky. Yeah. Um, Jim and I had a conversation while I was in Memphis, like over like chat about it, and he had a lot to say. He did not like. You know, because normally we will watch it together, uh, but obviously I wasn't out of town, so he watched it. So he had a lot to say, and I really did appreciate it because it it made me think. Um, I don't think she did as well as she as they we you know they thought she did. Okay. Um, I thought I thought Jan would have elim- Jan eliminated her. Mm-hmm. Like. That's my thought. I felt like at least Jan eliminated her. Okay. Um, um, if not that, then I don't want to go all the way back to to um, um, Jiggly, but my main issue with that was that was kind of the first moment where we got the props and you know gag thing going, and that kind of was cute and funny. But after that, it it sort of started becoming this one up up ship up men ship mm-hmm. um or up woman ship whatever that became very um obvious that she was trying to beat herself and sometimes it succeeded and sometimes it didn't right um i it, i i'm not mad at akiria for not competing I think that was a good choice that she made for herself because she didn't want to do it, and that's fair. Right. And she had a right to, thank God. I feel that if Akira had competed, Akira would have beat her. Yeah. Like I feel that way in the depth of my soul. Like I feel that Akira would have beat her. Right. Um, so if Jan hadn't, if um, Akira hadn't gotten her out, which I don't think would have happened, um, Jan would have. I genuinely think, and I'll say it like this, if Akira had done it, Akira would be the one that was competing against Eureka. Mm-hmm. There's a part of me that just wondered while I was listening to you if Akira knew what the song was. Also true. And I wonder. She, and she was like, nope. No. Not even going to bother. Not worth my time. Conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. So there's that. <laughs> what about you? Oh, mine is very straightforward, and I kind of already mentioned it before. Uh, worst on-camera hosting ever. <laughs> Fire Carson Cressley, make him audition to get back on as a judge. <laughs> Keep him to judging, maybe. I don't want him doing this that, that kind of crap again. Like, yeah. While Michelle annoys me at times, this really annoyed me. And I was like, no, girl. Like, yeah. you, can, you can do better than this. Fair. Not enjoyable. 
So, yeah. But that is a big old, like, recap uh, of us discussing what happened in the Redemption Secret Lip Sync Smackdown. Uh, we are down to two episodes. We have episode 11 and episode 12, which is the finale. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, mm. We will see what comes next, and we'll discuss that a little bit uh, in a short uh, post show. But if you would like to tell us what your thoughts are, you can go to CubsOutLoud.com. You can send us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You could also uh, leave us a phone call, a voicemail message, perhaps. And we would be happy to listen to it. We'd even play it on the show if you'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call us at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. When it comes to social media outlets, you can type in Comes Out Loud pretty much anywhere. Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube. Um, and you can see uh, both our drag race items as well as the regular show there. Um, if you want to join our COL DR uh, chat on telegram you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash telegram hyphen c-o-l-d-r you can find out about when we're doing our uh, regular series shows on uh, our google calendar which is tinyurl.com forward slash calendar uh, dash c-o-l if you would like to support us there are several ways to do that you could go to zazzle.com slash comes out loud and buy yourself something a little merch perhaps a nice coffee mug uh, that Damon happens to have an example of there, which has our Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on it, and it happens to be called the Two Tone Coffee Mug. Um, it has Ooh. a pink handle with a matching pink interior, uh, but comes in a couple of different colors. And we also have apparel, so there are different uh, shirt designs. Damon happens to be wearing our Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo uh, mm -hmm. shirt in a lovely blue color with the crown. Uh, and I'm trying to says, turn off this blur, so it... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, and uh, has drag race and, and pink on the bottom. And then we also have like from the Smashy Collection design uh, group. Consent is my foreplay, and this happens to be in the drag pride colors uh, to represent the drag pride flag. You could also become a Patreon or sorry, a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for as little as a dollar a month. And then you get the full uh, length episodes with the pre and post show information uh, to listen and or watch because um, there is a secret YouTube access to the full video. Oh, I know. Uh, and you could also, you could just leave us a tip. We would be happy to take the money, honey. Uh, unlike Pandora, uh, not getting money, we would we would gladly accept yours. PayPal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can make a one-time donation towards our costs for putting on the podcast. And you can also help promote Cubs Out Loud. You can go to Apple Podcasts and rate us five stars, please, with a lovely Thank comment. You. Um, you can also subscribe pretty much anywhere online that you get a podcast. COL Drag Race does have its own RSS audio feed if you're only interested in these. And uh, Damon, if they were to find you online, where would they go? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Um, on most bear related sites, are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Mm mm, honey. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like to get in touch with me, I pretty much anywhere online is Gabra73. When it comes to drag race uh, and all things drag, I have a Twitter specifically that's G A R B E A R 73. D R A G. And with that, uh, we're going to exit on episode number 10. And uh, in just literally hours from now, uh, we'll have episode 11 to watch. Oh my. Girl.